Okay, this is, <coughs> excuse me. This is um, Codecraft 21. Code this is around 7 and 11. This is the first <coughs> CF screencast I'll be um, uploading this month. So yeah, it is a dip two round. Um, and the contest is starting right now. Good luck. satisfied. Um, I think because of odd and evenness, the, um, the best number shouldn't be super far. We can just brute force until we find a number because of odd and, of odd and even properties. Yeah, so we need the GCD function. Um, wait, hold on, this is a long. <coughs> so find the smallest integer that's at least 10. Okay. So while true, um, That's just the sum of the digits. And then if GCD of digits in n is greater than 1, let me break. Otherwise, this. This is problem A. Let's look at problem B. So problem B, you're given n rectangles, <coughs> each of height 1. Each rectangle's width is a power of 2. Okay. You're also given a two-dimensional box of width h. Note that w may or may not be a power of two. Moreover, w is at least as large as the um as the width. W is at least as large as the width of the largest rectangle. Okay, I see. Find the smallest height of a box such that it's able to fit all the given rectangles. Um, is there a visual? There is. Okay. So you are first given the number of rectangles in the width of a box. Oh, I see. Um. Well, I believe some a greedy type of thing could work. Like greedy would probably just work. Time limit of one second. I don't think. So let's see. <clears throat> so it's not necessarily a power of two, which is important. If we put the largest ones in first, We could use like a priority queue. 
Yeah, because we have a block of like <clears throat> in this sample, the block of like eight and four two one is at least in this case it's interchangeable. So if we could put a block of eight in there, it's okay to do that. I think it's just greedy. I'm not really sure. Because everything is like power of two, <clears throat> we don't have to worry about like knapsack, incorrect knapsack greedies. So no, the width is equal to. Okay, now the question is how are we going to implement this? <coughs> First thing we do is probably sort this array. Um, after we sort the array, we want to process elements in decreasing order. We could probably hmm, kind of think about how we could do this. Maybe a priority queue or a preset. So we do this, or like that. <coughs> okay, so we essentially add how many blocks of n exist, well, no blocks of w. So m set will push m set and w. <clears throat> okay, so we want to get the we want to get the smallest number such that it's at least as big as this current number. Q is equal to M set up. So we pull M set and key, and we push M set and key, and this is taken up by space, array at I. So um, this, and then if M set up contains key of W. Two and three. Um, this is n log n. Let's see how fast this runs. One four. Okay, I think we'll be fine in terms of runtime. All right, move on to problem C and D. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, E is an interactive problem. D is potentially some sort of DP or brute force type of thing. Because <coughs> of high time limit and low um, N bound. I'll just read C. You've grown up in a mystical universe. You're faced by N consecutive 2D planes. He shoots a particle of decay HK at the planes. The particle can pass through the plane directly, however, each, every plane produces an identical copy of the particle going in the opposite direction with the, the decay of K minus 1. So if there are two planes, one particle is shot with decay H3 towards the right. Produces a single particle. First plane produces and lets us continue to the right. I see. <clears throat> so you want to find the size of a multi set given N and K. So it's a multi set. So we have 
two integers and n and k. So n is the number of planes that exist. K is a what is k? Oh, okay, that's an initial particle that gets shot. So we could count <coughs> um, contribution, right? If we could count for each plane, how many particles um, begin over there, then we know that it produces a certain number of particles. And those particles can, will either extend to a certain amount or they won't. So we could do a dp where it's like dp of this is a current like this is a current plane you're on this is your size of k and what is the answer for that answer for that is going to be one plus the size of like the next thing or yeah okay so we could define a dp of like i and k, um, and what goes into this state is the next plane of the same thing plus this minus one, assuming it, um, it's k is greater than one. If it's not, then we just don't include it. Okay, um, how do we do this? Well, we could pre-compute this dp beforehand, right? And then just query it. <coughs> so we could do something like long dp is equal to new long of everything is at most a thousand. Yeah. And so dp of if you've okay, so this is like We could do this. We should show this as minus one. <coughs> so, I believe for any value in here, well, I mean, I guess we only consider one. Yeah, dp of zero and k is equal to one. Because if we have zero more planes to go through, then we just consider itself as a point. Otherwise, this is a plane that we're currently on. Um, and this is like the value of k we currently have. And so dp at p at k is going to be equal to dp at p minus one k. If k is strictly greater than one, dp at p at k is also going to have this. And then I believe we can just do that. 4312. One, two, and then big F number. One, two, that's not right. Shoot. Um, okay. Why is that not right? 500 and 200 this. The value of one through 500 is correct. Particle produce more than that, or maybe we're double counting. 
we might be double counting. Oh wait, no. Um, okay, so this is like just itself as a particle. The number of particles that we get is equal to Second plane plus one. The first plane lets d equals two. Oh, in the opposite direction. Wait. N consecutive shoots of particle decay hk at the planes. A particle can pass through a plane directly. However, every plane produces an identical copy of a particle going in the opposite direction. Okay. So how on earth did I pass the first set of samples? But also, thank God they had this test case. Because I would not have seen that. Um, okay, so the problem is slightly different. Because this counts a number of ways. DP at K counts a number of ways. Um, how do I say this? Assuming all the, all the particles like go in that direction, pretty much. First plane. <coughs> okay, so it double crosses. Okay, how do we do this then? So the number of um, particles it produces is equal to that. I guess the advantage in here is that if we can consider, um, it's maybe we have to consider a different DP. Hmm. Maybe potentially. direction and going back and forth so what that means is um a particle starting well I think the particle starting at there will give this value it should never cycle back because if it's of the same weight it goes in one direction and if it's of, and if it doesn't go in the same direction, then it has to be strictly um, decreasing weight. So alternatively, we could do <coughs> a DP like that, where instead we store, um, we store like the the. Um, How much, like how long it has, like the distance it has, as well as the weight itself.
So uh, if we modify the DP, excuse me, instead it would look like um, So the contribution that p a k gets, it still gets a contribution from here. Just now, um, instead, we want to get the so other is equal to. Oh, it depends on n. Oh, th this is why we can't um calculate. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Okay, that makes sense. I think I see why um, this is multi-test now because it's hard because it's hard to calculate this dp because I mean we need to know the value of n for this dp to work. Okay, <clears throat> that makes a little more sense. We need n. Well, we have currently n units in our path um, with h of at most k. So four and so no matter what the age is, if we have zero units in our path, then the only contribution that we get is itself. Well, but oh, but we also we want to process this in order of k's. One second time moment. Will recursive DP be fine? I think it'll be fine. Static long DP. DP is equal to be long here. Um, we have to figure out um, we need to figure out what his contribution is so long res comes from we can go one unit further with the same the same age or we can flip it so add a to n or access to n this. It would be like n minus um, p plus 1. Because it was 2 and n was 4. Or I guess this means it has 4 planes left. If this had 3 planes left, it would have 2 planes left. Otherwise it would have n minus four plus one, one plane left. Okay. So red plus equal to DFS. Oh, there's a number of planes that we have left of K minus one. And then, okay, well, if K is equal to zero, then we return DP at P. Well, then we just return zero because it can't contribute whatsoever. Um, Okay, and then we do sp .n dfs n and k. Line forty three. Oh, pff, p minus one. My bad. Line negative one on fifty. I didn't set up with my base cases. Shoot. When k is equal to 1, k is plus than or equal to k, k plus plus. If you have 0, k is it's always equal to 1. And if k is equal to 0, then obviously a weight of a particle of weight 0 can never do anything. It's not right. Hmm. Do we skip this problem for now? 
No, it still has a lot of souls. Six three one three. But k equals zero obviously doesn't do anything. Otherwise, we contribute that, and then this goes in this other direction, meaning we have to pass this many units. sends one out that way. The first plane produces the D3 so it produces a D3, goes D2, and then this goes D2, which then lets D1 go that way. <coughs> okay, so 2 and 3 is the first test case that we're thinking about. So if we have zero planes left and the weight of positiveness, then it's just one unit. Wait, so then it lets D2 go out this way. Oh, maybe it's not minus. Maybe it's just this. That's possible. 4312. Um, does this give. A, what, what does happen? Oh, shoot. That's really weird. I don't. It should have never. That should have never happened. So, three. Maybe it's. Is it in the 1 in 500 case? No, it gives the right answer for that. What about 500 and 200? 500 and 250. That's where it's. Line 57. This over here. It should never overlap on itself, though, because it goes strictly to K minus 1. Huh. What if we then do something like DP at, I don't know, like that, maybe? Will this help? Nope. Okay, I'm gonna write this iteratively then. I don't wanna figure, I don't wanna figure out why that's wrong. I'm just not in the mood to f debug that. So we do this. Um. And then we assume everything else is just zero for now. God, but the problem is that we need to generate answers for all. Um, okay, we need to generate answers in increasing k. So if we do that in increasing k. Then what we can do is I'm gonna write a second file for this hat coder no shoot source. I just wanna rewrite some of this. The DP itself should stay the same, I'm just like implementing it differently. So we do this. One DP is equal to new long n plus one k plus one. How much memory do we have? I mean, it it shouldn't really exceed a memory in the first place. It'll be fine. Or um, we always want to first process an increasing weight. So k is equal to one. K is less than equal to K, K plus plus. And then if they have the same weight, we we need the answer of P minus 1 before P. So we do 
and i is equal to 1, i is less than or equal to at 0 at k is always equal to 1, no matter what. Um, <coughs> and then, well, it's this plus dp at n minus, well, n minus k. Oh, wait, no. N minus N minus I, my bad. N minus I at K minus one. Yeah. All right. Let's see if this helps at all. Okay, that looks like a correct answer for a second test case. And that's correct as well. All right, we'll submit. Okay, got C. I didn't really like how long I spent on it, but <clears throat> it's also definitely like on the harder end of C, so it's not that big of a deal. All right, <laughs> D, E, and F have about the same number of solves at the moment, so that's kind of funny. I'm not really sure which one to look at first. Um, let me think. If we were to do something like, um, wait, why is there a notification? Oh, okay, that's just for problem B. Okay, E is interactive, D is, oh my God, I see fraction values, but all of output are integers. What is f? Okay, let me factor a banana. Standings. I need to look at standings a little bit. <coughs> okay, what about officially? Only d. Or one solve on e, but it's probably someone who's scrolling. Okay, I'll read d for now. Well, do we look at something else? No, okay, oh, let's, let's look at D. So you have a, you have a microwave, but you want to put some bananas. <laughs> oh, it's a Steins Gate, isn't it? Oh my god. <laughs> Fucking weebs. You have end timestamps before the microwave stops working completely. Well, I mean, that makes me a weeb too, if I know that reference, so I can't really say anything, huh? You have n timestamps before the microwave stops working completely. <laughs> I can't get over this. You have n time steps before the microwave stops working completely. At each time step, it, it displays a new operation. Let k be the number of bananas in the microwave currently. Initially, k is equal to zero. In the ith operation, you're given three parameters here. Based on the value of t, you must do... Okay, so you have two types of operations. The first one is you want to pick a number that's between 0 and y, and perform this update k times. Okay. I'll put the earliest time step in which you can create exactly j bananas. Perform the following update this many times. K. What is Maybe the number of bananas in the microwave. Are we we're give what are we given? Oh we're given the operations, okay. <coughs> For each J such that this M is almost ten to the five.
Wait, so, oh, it becomes a ceiling. Okay, okay, I see. So this can be a fraction, but you always have an integer number of bananas. N is 200. That's how many operations we have. Is this not... What if it's just like a Boolean DP? Like, we do DP of... <coughs> True if so this is true if you can achieve um n bananas in i moves. You have to do them in order, right? You have n timestamps. I have to assume you do do them in order. Yeah, okay. So that's what would that be? 20 million. 20 million? It's okay. Because we're given 3 seconds. And it's also boolean, so it doesn't take up much memory either. And then just for each possible k in like each value, you just calculate when it happens. No, okay. If I'm not misreading this, this is not that hard. <laughs> at the at the ith timestamp, you must apply the ith operation exactly once. <laughs> oh, okay, I get it now. I mean, because we can choose AI to be zero, we don't actually have to do that. Yeah. Okay, I see. I see what makes this problem difficult now. Because doing a DP naively would be um, m squared times n. We probably want to find a way to reduce it to this. But then it's also like for that value. It's not super clear how to transition in the first place. Hey, this seems interesting. Can x be something smaller than 1? x is at least 10 to the 5. Wait for type 2 operation. <coughs> so, oh, OK. We're always multiplying it by a, f by a factor um, of at least of greater than 1. So the number of bananas we have always increases. Does it strictly one? Well, I mean, we don't have to make it strictly increase because we could just choose to perform this operation zero times. So in that case, um, let's see. How fast can 10 to the f can, um, I want to see how fast, or like how slow, the second operation can grow. It's 101 over 100,000. This to the power of, let's say to the power of 200, that <laughs> really doesn't grow at all, huh? What about this to the power of 1,000? Wow, that grows really slow. OK, we probably can't do that then. Um, 
do you think? Oh, well, we start off with zero bananas, so if we start off with um, type 2 operations, then they can never do anything, so we can just ignore them. So we can obtain three, four, five, six, him and eight, nine. Wait. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty.
fractions are always going to be some number. Um, there's always going to be some number overlap. Oh, we can also add a fraction. Oh, I didn't even realize that. Shoot. I did not realize that. Exactly this many bananas or show that is impossible. <clears throat> so essentially, we can either add a fractional amount or multiply by a fractional amount. And for each operation, we can do it up to y times. What is bound on y? It's m. I mean, I guess that makes sense, because then you would exceed m. Otherwise, you would do this value. operation and then some k So it's some fraction over 10 to the 5. Okay, well, for the addition step, <clears throat> um, because k is always going to be an integer, we can just like turn x into an integer. And then it works that way. Order of operations? Does order of operations matter? Oh, yeah, because if we multiply, 
before or after we add something that can influence our answer. Why is also that value? If everything was only an addition, if everything only happened by addition, how would I do this? Um, if it was only by addition, then we would have to check to see even if it's possible to get a value under those constraints. seems tricky. We need to make more observations. value in here gets populated up to y. K plus time. of these values, we could have either this or this.
No, n is at most 200. to store this number. Hmm. If it's up to k times. Okay, well, the sum of y over all operations is 2, no, 20 million. So if a sum over everything is 20 million, then how can we, can we somehow represent this in one operation? So like for every block of operations of the same type, if we can efficiently determine what set of values are good or not, and then we can merge them together um, efficiently, then that could work. <coughs> that exists in here either goes up that many times or this many times. It's like, but we can't we can't do ten to the five times ten to the five. Um can we do that instead? Where it's like for each value we can iterate over This many times, or this many times, or this many times. Okay, what this is saying is that <coughs> if you do an operation and you add k bananas, the value of k mod is something, or the, but that's only for addition. You can't really apply that to multiplication. But either way, like the value mod um, xi would be the same value. And we have round xi up to an integer. Then what would that mean? is achievable, then all values that are at least as large as k and match the um, equivalence class will also be reachable. Hmm. Either way, it's like, maybe this merging idea is correct, it just seems kind of difficult to apply properly. If we can represent, so if we can process every operation in 10 to 5 operations, then this will work perfectly fine.
Okay, so this is three, this is four, this is ten. So we could either add three twice, <clears throat> multiply by four twice, or add ten three times. keep track of how many timestamps would happen. How about the earliest timestamp? not getting anywhere with the I wanna look at E. <clears throat> okay, so you have N houses, N is at most five hundred. There's exactly one directed road between every pair of houses. Okay. There's exactly one directed road between every pair of houses. Two houses A and B are bi reachable if they're if it's like this. So you want to find a pair of bi reachable houses from A and B among all such pairs. He wants to choose one with a maximum value of this. Where KI is the number of roads leading to the house I. KI is a number of roads leading to the house I. Okay, so you want to maximize its n degree. So given two houses A and B, George asks whether B is reachable from A. There's no upper limit on the number of queries, but you cannot ask more queries after the judge answers yes to any of your queries. That is really interesting. Huh. That is really interesting. So you need to ask these queries? You need to ask these queries in such a way that once you get an answer of yes, 
um, you know the answer to enough, you know that some queries are no, and you need to be able to get that information. So it only tells us, wait, what does it tell us? You're given for each house only number of incoming roads. Okay. You're allowed to ask one type of query for the judge. Given two houses A and B, the judge answers whether B is reachable from A. That is so weird. That is a really, really weird problem. Um, let's see. So we want to the maximum value of this. Because the problem is, is that um, for a path like from A to B. I mean, obviously, we would get the information that A, A can reach B with, like, some series of nodes. But if we, but we can't simply just process all these queries by their maximum difference, because it's possible to do that. So it's basically a click, but it's like a, it's directed in only one direction. So if this is one, two, three, four, five, it could be like here, then here, then here, 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 here. Wait, so what are, are you given in degree? One, two, the maximum number of roads leading to house I. Okay. So it's zero, one, two, three. Road three, one, two, three, four. Road four is leading, has only one. Road 5 has 2. Okay, well, because of the structure of the problem, you want to you want to ask these queries in such a way so that if you receive yes, if you receive information that A can reach B, then you also know that B has to be able to reach A. That's what we that's a, that's basically what we want to do, because once we receive an answer of a query yes. 
um, the guess, its guess for the two houses has to be whatever the whatever you just asked, because. Wait, does it? Is that true? Can we get, or maybe not? Because. I can't tell if that's true or not, actually. Um, so if you get, like, say, here to here, okay, so for in degrees. Says we had two, one, zero. Well, okay. I mean, if it has an out degree, or I mean, if it has um an in degree of zero, it can reach every house. So we're not really worried about that. We're worried about whether um a number with this many values. Okay, and if it, okay, if a house has either zero or n minus one for like its degree, it can never be a part of that answer because it can't reach any of its houses. It's also possible for there to not exist a cycle in the first place, like in this graph. If we know that path from A to B exists, a path from B to A can exist. If a path from B to A were to exist, then there would be a sequence of nodes like this. Yeah. So how would we test that? Well, we would, we would need to know which numbers don't exist, or, or like which nodes cannot reach B. cycles of three.
Okay, so we never want to involve we never want to involve um, nodes that have zero or three in them, or like zero or k minus one, or n minus one, I guess. Um, zero or n minus one. a cycle like this. One, two, three, four. And so all of these nodes are reachable from each other. That's a little better. So one has one, two has three, three has three, four has one, five has two. Are all? Wait a minute. cycle doesn't exist is if all paths um, lead into a sink like that. If a sink like that exists, then it can't really work. This is reachable to here, this is reachable to here. There's also three ones. Is it possible for a node with out or with n degree of three? And then there's a node with an n degree of one. If it's possible to use this only in degree, then there's essentially three different ways and a bunch of different ways that this could go. So these have to have some sort of edge, and even if they're all sink edges, and if this has a sink edge, well, I mean, one of these can't have a sink edge. Okay, so three and four. So one through four exists. Okay. Um, I, I'm not sure if this is correct or not. 
I, oh, there's no way this is right. I'm gonna try it. Like, I don't really have anything else to do besides at least test this theory out. Um. So we have an N and then an array. So how do we ask these queries? Okay, I see. So. we don't ask like self loops right yeah okay so if the ray at a is well I mean if one of these nodes has like zero or n minus one, it's obvious then it's not going to be possible in the first place. So we don't actually have to, so it's actually not gonna like make our answer. It's not gonna ever return a premature yes. Some sample. So if array at i is strictly greater than array at b, I like that. These are in degrees, so k plus one, b plus one. Oh, this is reachable from here. So this is asking if print yes if house B is reachable from house A. So if house B is reachable from house A. So in a really big in degree means a really small out degree. So it's asking if the if you can from one of the really big, really small out degree can reach one of the really big the really big out degree or really small in degree. Okay. I see.
green and blue. Green. This. And terminate. So, turn. Is there a second? Okay, there is a second sample. I just want to run it on this sample so it doesn't like completely break. So this is just no, 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 no. Okay. There's no way this works. This works? This actually works? There's no way. Oh wait, don't TLE. Please don't TLE. Oh no, is it TLE? Oh, I think it's TLE. That's not that big of a deal though, because I think this way works. That's so funny, dude. This works? What? <laughs> it's on pretest 23 and it's stuck on there. So like, I feel like my way is correct. Oh my god, a TLE on pretest 23. Oh, that's so funny, dude. Why is that actually hilarious? Um, okay, so I'm gonna change a few things. I'm gonna use buffer reader, even though I probably don't need it. <laughs> this actually works. It's actually, that's so cruel. Okay, but I should just I just need to make a few input optimizations, and then we should be able to get the. That's so dumb. What the I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> That's so funny. And file that next hint. And God, I can't get over how dumb that is. So in file that next line. Two houses. So I don't have to flush because it's print outline, I think. Oh wait, hold on. Ask the query after judge is returned, yes. Really? Wait, hold on. Um three one one one. get wrong answer what on earth I think I'm just having the stroke now and file that next maybe so I'm gonna pretest one pretest two pretest five twenty-three I mean it should run in time right it's literally just we ask that many queries until it's dead It's 500, there's, there's 500 squared queries that we ask, or 500 squared over 2. Don't, do not make me try to figure this out. Oh, I'm going to be so tilted. If I have to waste time making this run, 
making was not TLE. Don't. Oh my god. TLE Precess 29? You're kidding me. You're actually kidding me. Um. God, that's so annoying. That is so, so, so annoying. Did any Java solutions work? Any language in Java 8? Someone got it. Okay, how does that run so fast? Is there an optimization we can make? Um, those exceptions. I don't want to waste time making this run in time. That's just, that's just not fun. Um, okay, I think we just have to do C++ or something. If this still doesn't run in time. <laughs> I refuse to get shafted for this reason. All right, I'm starting C++. Um, I'm going to start the C++ conversion. God, TLE pre... Why is this tle dude? I don't know. Is there any other way to make this better than it already is? Counting sort? I don't know. Maybe counting sort.
not like this, dude. Not like this. Um, I need to find... I need to find an interactive problem that he did. Figure out what kind of input method he's using. Not like this, dude. Not like this. I... Maybe I can just find an interactive problem I did. Um... Interactive problem. <laughs> All right, let's look. Java eight the A seed. Mine ran in over two seconds. Fastest one <laughs> didn't run that much faster. I mean, this one is kind of fast. Out.println. What is out? Is print writer faster? Print writer. But that would actually kind of make some sense if print writer was faster. How do we define this print writer? <sighs> Who uses print writer? Okay. So if we do something like this new output stream, then we do out.println, um, get rid of this, out.println, then we do this, out.close, out.println, out.close, and out.close. Can this at least run in time, please? Like, it's n log n, so I know the bottleneck comes from actually reading the queries. Running on pretest1, running on pretest1, running on pretest1. Does it not flush? I think I might have to flush. Yeah, that might be why. So, out of flush. Pretest 15, pretest 23. Just please don't make this the reason why I don't get this problem. Still TLE test case 29? Oh my god. I have 17 minutes to try to fix this? Um. Like, you're kidding me. I, I don't know what to say. Sort by a pair and then by a tuple. Larry and H. I will be using your code. <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. Oh, you wait. 
The screen won't even show me writing in C++. That's so dumb. Okay, whatever. 505. These are all integers. Um, int n i j. Is scanf faster than cn? I agree. Oh, then we have to do the tying bullshit. Um, Galen Colin. <laughs> I'm literally looking at other people's C++ code <laughs> to like figure out how to implement this. It is so annoying. Like, I hate doing this. It would just waste time and it just causes unnecessary stress. Um, God dang it, this is so annoying. Send help, please. Send help indeed. So if we copy this, um, after here, then I can send help. Is that how it works? It is. Okay. So send help, we do this. And I and J. <laughs> so V dot push back. Well, okay, if array at I, then we want to put in A A and B as a pair. So we do A or I guess no. I plus one. J plus one. And that's the pair in here. Array at i minus a at j. Otherwise, we do um, this, where we push back j minus i. And we do a j plus 1 and i plus 1. Uh, we want to sort it by... Okay, so how do we reverse a vector in C++? Okay, it's just reverse my vector dot. Okay. So it's just reverse v dot begin v dot end. And then for um size or is it length? It might be I'll fix that later. Um we need to check so int x is going to be equal to v dot second dot first and y is equal to v dot second dot second and we see out um See out that flush. Um, so see out a question mark with a space and then an X and then a Y. Flush. So we do this and then this and this and then a new line. Okay, and then string res is equal to well, string res cn res if res dot equals no okay if res dot length is equal to three is the 
the query that we just processed was this. is going to be my debugger for this code. Um, Short.v.size. Is it v.size? Or... Okay, get size of vector in C++. Okay, so it is size. Get size of string in C++. What is that? It's string.length. Okay, so that looks okay. Maybe I didn't get the interactive problems for problem set. So we should look up interactive. Compilation error, that's fine. V dot second dot first. Did I mean end? Probably. Or wait. Oh shoot, this is via I, right? That's probably what it is. V at, well, via A. Via A. Submit. Meanwhile, I have to figure out what C code looks like for a past interactive problem. Here, C plus plus. Integer zero violate the range one through four. How on earth did that happen? Okay, it did compile, which is good. At least it compiled. So let's let's try to test it on here. I don't care if we get some. I just want to get this problem. Because I. Because, like. If the only reason. Oh my god. I'm going to be so tilted. If the only reason I get this wrong. Is because of that. If AI is this. Otherwise, JI, JI. We print this out. Oh, we could print this out. So four one two oh three. We run. Oh shoot! It's supposed to be exclamation mark. My bad. Um, submit code. I had a question mark zero zero at the end instead of exclamation mark zero zero. Twenty four. Got it. Dude, why did I have to spend six wrong answers in half an hour making us run in time? I'm so... I am so tilted right now. I lost so much time to that problem. Oh my god, dude. That's so annoying. Ugh. Oh. I can't believe it. That, that's the worst. That's just the worst. Oh my god, dude. That is so... Mmm, how many... That's just... That, that hurts. Because we lost, I'd say about 400 points. Because we're at four. We're at like 410. If we were at like 45, then we would be about 100 places better than we are right now. 
and it's for a stupid it's <sighs> maybe like there's maybe there was some part of that that wasn't optimized in my code in my java solution but like <sighs> i whatever i should just i i don't really know how to do d i'm safe right now um f yeah i'm just i can't dude just that when stuff like that happens that just like i just i just can't stand it i just can't stand it i think our only we should just look at if there's any hacked solutions there's none okay um problem a was this like brute force into a find one that's probably going to be fine i think box fix box fitting oh yeah this is probably fine this is just dp um and then this god i still can't believe that happened that just mm, that just defeats <laughs> okay well is this my contest there's five minutes left and i don't know how to do d This might be, this might just be my contest. Oh, I still can't believe that happened. <laughs> oh my god. Um, yeah, so. The strange, the strangest thing is that for E, someone else, like, solved it in Java, and it was, like, really fast. Like, it was in 100 milliseconds. So I definitely need to look at their code to see what they did differently. I mean, unless if there's like a, somehow a different solution for this, which I feel like there isn't, then I don't know, dude. I'm just, I can't believe I spent, I cannot believe I spent that long converting Java C++. I think this is the third time I've ever had to convert, um, a solution to C++ officially to make it um, pass. Like third time ever. That's that's so annoying. Okay. Um. How much rating are we predicted to gain? Thirty-four. <laughs> well, I mean, probably would have been more than that if we didn't. <laughs> Get dropped. Okay, well, okay, it's whatever. Test A a little bit more. I guess because I'm bored. We have one, and we, or two, I guess, work for well, because I'm arbitrary big number, arbitrary big number. Yeah. Um, it is long, and then we do something like this, M plus plus, and then we break this loop. It looks fine. Okay. 
Okay, well, Frühstück mit Christine ist mein, das Hund mit Christine ist mein. Um, if answer doesn't equal to one, so why will answer is equal to one? Long, long, define long, long as LL. Yeah, I'm not. Okay. That's the end of the contest. Well, <laughs> that was... I'm, I'm mad at that. I'm just... I'm tilted at that. Like, that just makes me mad. About E. Okay. I'll just talk about A through... Like, the problems I solved really quickly. Um, problem A. Let's see. Problem A is... Okay. So for, pro for problem A, you can just um, basically brute force the answer. And the reason why um, this won't TLE is you're going to reach a valid number um, a, in like a very near f in the very near future. So let's imagine if um, so if you think about odd and even numbers, obviously the GCD of two even numbers is at least two. So that means that and two is greater than one. So any time that the sum of the digits of n and n itself are both even, then you, then you found an answer. So imagine if n was odd right now, and you added 1 to it to make it even. If the sum of its digits were even at that point, then you have obviously reached an answer. Otherwise, um, the sum of those digits is odd. But then what happens is then when you increase um, like the next value, and it rounds over to like the next digits place, um, the parity of the sum of the digits changes. So if you think about if you were if you had something like 19, and then you added one, it becomes 20. So well, I mean, I should be more specific. Normally, if you add a one to a number, its parity like switches, right? But if you were to take 19, the sum of its digits is an even number, add a one to it, and it becomes 20. And then 20 is also the sum of an each of a, of its digits even digit sum. Sorry. <laughs> um, so basically, you can just brute force. Um, start start from n, increase n by 1 until you find an answer. That's A. Problem B. Problem B was... OK, it's pretty much just greedy. Um, basically, you have a set of um, x blocks, and you want to put them into buckets of you want to put them into buckets of size w such that you minimize the number of buckets that you use. So normally, um, if you were just given this problem like with any value of like rectangles, then you would have to do some like DP knapsack. However, because all the size of rectangles are powers of two, greedy will com is completely fine here. And the reason why this works is because um, any any um if a block is bigger than another block it's um exactly two times as big as that block so whatever you had as a placeholder in like a size like two to the power of a if you had like some set of blocks that fit inside two to the power of a then those blocks are always going to be like 
they're, they're going to essentially work in terms of like halves. It's like it's half of a range or something like that, or even less, but it doesn't really matter. And so basically with this observation, what you can do is you can just um, assume you have n like containers of size w, and they're initially all empty. And then you just do a greedy to where you want to find the, the box with the smallest capacity that can fit the current value that you're trying to put in. And you want to process all your blocks in decreasing order. And then at the end, you just sim the answer is simply just how many of these buckets um, have a block in them. So yeah, that was B. Problem C is a pretty standard DP. Nothing too special. Wait, that's not my C code. This is my C code. So it's a standard DP where you realize the most important part about this problem is iterating in the correct order of the DP. So what I mean by that is um, if you think about the DP recurrence as the first, you want to count how many ways, um, well, what is the contribution to the answer of a particle of age k, and it has to go through n planes. And the contribution of that particle is equal to the contribution of that same particle um, with one less plane plus the contribution of a particle with an age of with an age of k minus one. And it's going in the other direction. So instead of going through n planes, or well, instead of going through i planes, it goes through n minus i planes. So that's pretty much how the DP works. Um, over here, because each DP state relies on um, any DP state with a fewer number of planes, you have to iterate an increasing order of a planes. And because um, it also depends on the on its previous on a smaller age value, regardless of how many planes it goes through, you have to make sure you process all of these age values before you process this value. So that's pretty much it for C. Fairly standard DP problem. Um, not much else to say for that. Okay, for E, okay. Um, to preface this right now, one, this should not have TLE'd in Java. I wasted so much time and so many wrong submissions, and it makes me mad just thinking about it. But whatever, it's fine. So how does so how do you go about this? So pretty much, if you were to think about um, a greedy solution, you would realize that um, you would realize um, what was it? What was I going to say? Right. So you want to maximize the absolute like value difference of the n degree of whatever pair of nodes work. So obviously, um, the tricky part is that for any query, you have to determine um, whether a can reach b if you know that b can reach a and some set of like constraints in which all those constraints are no. And so, um, it would be logical to kind of do to sort these queries by a greedy value. And this, so you want to sort them by decreasing like value of their score. And then you realize that um, for, for a pair of nodes with like a really big score, one of these nodes is going to have very few edges coming out of it, and other nodes is going to have very few edges going into it. And so you want to check to see if you can go from the node that has very few that has very little out degree to the node of very little in degree. And if you process the nodes in this order, if you know that you can go from this node to this node um, using this like strict path, then you should be able to go the other way around. Because if you were to go the other way around, you would start from a node with many choice, with a lot, with a high out degree, and you want to end in a node with a high in degree. So by, um, so essentially by pigeonhole principle, um, you sh if you can guarantee that you can make a stricter path, you can make this easy path back, and that will form a valid cycle. So that's essentially what my code is doing. I just um, store every possible pair. I sort them by their um, by their score, and then I just keep on asking these queries in order until I find one that returns yes. And because I ask the queries in the, the strict direction, I know that the other direction is guaranteed to be yes. So yeah, that's, I'm well, I say guaranteed, but I didn't actually like 
formally proveless solution. I just kind of drew an example and um, realized that that was probably correct, but yeah. And also, I need to figure out why this TL lead, or like what I could do to make this not TL lead, because I wasted so much time, and that actually cost me like a, a really good amount in standings. So yeah. Um, that's pretty much it. I solved A, B, C, and E. I don't know how to do D. I saw, I thought about it for like maybe half an hour. I'm not really sure how to approach it. But other than that, yeah, that's pretty much it. I did not read F. Um, so yeah, that's my contest. Hopefully I don't fail any system tests. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching me suffer on E.